This is an original Nintendo DS, and today we're going to be putting a USB-C port in it. That's right, we're going to be replacing the old charging port with a brand new USB Type-C. And with all the screws removed, we can remove this back cover. And right there is a charging port. I could take this down further, but honestly, I think we have enough room here. I can just work on this without actually fully removing the board from the rest of the unit. Well, unfortunately, I realized I actually do need to fully remove the board because, well, the mounts are through hole. So to get to the other side, we kind of have to take the board out. So let's do that. Okay, I've actually changed my mind about how I'm going to remove that port. I'm actually just going to use hot air. So let's do that because I think that's going to be easiest. As you can see here, we're using the heat to actually melt the flux and the solder, and it's going great, except for the through holes. The through holes became quite a challenge to actually get out. I should have desoldered them first, but after a bit of wiggling, it did eventually come out, but it was not easy, as you can see. Okay, the port is off. It is really fucking hot. I've touched it too many damn times with my fingers, but the port didn't get damaged, and neither did the motherboard. So this is completely reversible if I ever need to want to, or want to, I don't know why I'd need to switch it back to original, so we're good to go. As you can see, that is looking sick. Pads are perfect. Didn't damage any pads, so we're good to go. And as you can see here, these are the pads we need. This one here, which is ground, and this one right here, which is the actual positive. The rest of these pads are completely unnecessary, except for these two, obviously, they're for support. But the rest of these pads, who really knows what they do? I mean, the internet does, but I don't, so we don't need them. That is exactly where it needs to go. So let's install this thing. It doesn't look as easy to install as the Game Boy Advanced SP one. It kinda is a little bit more sketchy. So we'll see. It should install just fine, I think, though. Let's do it. Okay, right here, I'm just tinning up the pads. As you can see, the original solder joints from the factory on this thing honestly aren't that great. I ended up reflooring them later, but I mean, they would have worked fine, but I just made them look better later. But as you can see, we're just tinning up these pads and making them ready to go on, hopefully somewhat well. And here's me putting it on. And here's me struggling to put it on for a lot longer. I, like, actually had a lot of difficulty putting this on. I don't know why, but it was actually really, really, really annoying. Like, it just kept flipping up on me. But at least after that side was done, this side was way easier to do. I just put the soldering iron on and it was done. And of course this mount was super easy to do as well. Just put some solder on. And so was the other side. The other side was just as simple. Just add a whole bunch of solder till you see it flow all the way through. And it's done. Perfect. And right here we're just gonna clean up the board with some 91% isopropyl alcohol to clean off all of our extra flux and make this board look shiny and not covered in flux because that's disgusting. That's way better. Now let's start assembling this thing and see if it works. Okay, all the ribbon cables and stuff have been hooked back up. Let's put in the screws and then put the back cover on. Oh, I almost forgot the 3D printed adapter that makes this the same size as the original port so we'd have a weird hole in the back case. And with that, she's done! Look at that USB Type-C port. That is looking sick. But the real question is, does it still work? Let's go find out. But now to answer the question, does it charge? That is gonna matter a lot. So let's plug it in and see if it catches fire. Okay, moment of truth. Nothing. Why do we have nothing? Hello? Um... Nothing. The hell? Alright, I've torn this board down and realized why I have no charging. As you can see right there on F1, there is nothing. Whenever I was using hot air to blow the uh, charging port off, I must have removed the fuse right there, and it must have gone flying. Unfortunately, there is no finding that thing because it's like the size of a fucking piece of sand. Like, <laughs> they're fucking tiny as hell. So, likely, I already bought some because it's actually been a few days. So, here we go. Let's install one of these fuses right right there. So let's do that. Now, I could probably just solder that on, but we're going to use some solder paste because, well, I have solder paste. So we're going to put some solder paste on there. Basically, it's a bunch of solder balls suspended in flux. So basically, I put a little bit on each thing, put the fuse on, and use a little bit of hot air and not blow it across the room and melt the solder and melt it on. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Quick editor's note, that expired in 2019? 
I've had that in my fridge for four years. What? <laughs> as you can see, I just kind of smudged some on the solder pads as surface tension will yank the solder onto the actual pad. And here is the actual tiny little fuse. Had to make sure I got it perfect so it didn't accidentally go flying or something. Yeah. And here is me using the hot air. And you should never go at it from the side like this or that'll happen. I had plenty of time to remember to always go straight down with the air while looking for that. As you can see this time, I am bringing the air straight down onto it and it doesn't send the fuse flying. So that worked beautifully. But the one side's actually sticking up a little bit, so I ended up going back over it to meld it the rest of the way just right here. And as you can see, it's flowing perfectly. Solder paste is amazing at doing solder paste things. Okay, the fuse is back in place. I only sent it flying across my mat a few times, but now let's see if this board even charges before we put it all the way back together. There's no battery hooked up, but it should at least flash orange. So let's see. Yep, we're good. So it's time to put it all the way back together. And now it's time to reassemble fast as fuck, boy. Yeah, I kind of screwed up, pinched the ribbon cables, but I'm undone, yada, yada, yada. But it's back together finally after some very fast work. I definitely work this fast in real life. I'm, I'm just that good. What can I say? I, I, obviously I'm not. It took me way longer than this. It took me so damn long. This is at like 10x speed. Actually, it is at 10x speed. I don't know why I'm saying it's about. I don't know why I'm talking. I didn't want to find music. Because I did have to find... Music takes a long time to find, okay? Okay, now we have a Nintendo DS that has a USB-C port. Let's plug this in and see if we start charging. Yeah, there we go. Now let's make sure it still turns on. Perfect, that is what we want to see. So, we now have a fully functional Nintendo DS that charges using a USB-C port. That is awesome. Perfect. It's not as easy to install as it looks. It doesn't look as easy to install. I just noticed something. You're screwed in the year 2100. You can't use your original DS in the year 2100. That's gonna suck.